There are two things really that I've heard from people over the last few years of me making videos about On One Photo Raw. The first one is, hey Jim, there's a whole lot of stuff in this product. I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I mean, I see so many different things that I can click on when I'm in Photo Raw. I don't really know where to begin. And that's really the second thing I've heard, which is, I don't really know where to begin. Like, what should I do to get started editing? Well, the fine folks at On One are coming out with On One Photo Raw 2024. It's coming out in a few days. And this video is a sneak peek at how they've addressed those two concerns. Now, those are the top two that I've heard. There's a whole lot of things that they've done to this product. I can't possibly cover it all in a single video, but I want to walk through a little bit about the user interface and how that's changed and been simplified and easier to use. And then also how they're aiming to help you all get started editing more quickly, really accurately, and also very easily. And that's with a tool called Brilliance AI. Let's take a look. This is Photo Raw 2024. And I do want to point out I'm in a pre-release version, which means some things may change. There won't be massive wholesale changes between now and the release date, but some things may change. But also, um, everything that I have isn't working exactly right just yet. Of course, it will be at launch, but I've got a pre-release and I wanted to point that out. Now, if you take a look at the interface in the previous version, 2023, you had lots of different things over here that you could click on, lots of different things. You had a few things up across the top, and then you had a number of things down across this right-hand side. And I think that's part of what caused people to kind of say, I don't know where to start. Like, I'm a little overwhelmed because there is a lot you can do with Photo Raw. It's an amazingly capable editor. It's kind of like Lightroom and Photoshop Shop kind of merged into one and became this powerful layered editor that can do time lapse and focus stacking and HDR and all these kind of things. And so I can understand why it feels a little bit overwhelming. But now the user interface is a lot cleaner. You don't have as many things. You have your photos front and center. And to be fair, they've done a lot of things like cataloging is quicker and easier. The UI, of course, is cleaned up. Things are faster under the hood. It's really moving pretty well. But they've simplified this user interface, which I think is great to help people get started. On the left hand side here, you've got browse and you've got edit. So you can just click on a photo and then you can just jump straight into edit and get your edit going if you want to. Also, this more, this little drop down menu here, you just click those three buttons and that's where you um, have a lot of these other functions that are now kind of, they're kind of hidden from view so as to kind of simplify the interface. You can, of course, with a highlighted photo, go straight to develop or local adjustments or whatever it might be. But let's say you've got multiple photos and you want to merge to HDR, you can highlight multiple photos, make a pano or an HDR or whatever it might be. So you have all that there. But also now you've got export, print, and share in that same drop down menu, which used to be buried kind of in the bottom right hand corner, which again goes back to how they've simplified the interface. A lot of tools, a lot of controls right there. They just make it really easy and straightforward so you can get straight into the editing. Now they've enhanced keyword AI, so it picks up related keywords and things like that. They've added the ability to add text as layers now, so you can mask and manipulate more with more control. And speaking of layers, they've also updated and expanded the layers panel, so it gives you better control and more things that you can do with it. I'll show you that as well. I think one of the first things that everyone's interested in is this Brilliance AI technology. And so you can go into a single photo, click on Brilliance AI, which as the name implies, uses AI to figure things out. It automatically creates local adjustments, which means it has a mask attached to it and it updates your photo. But the cool thing is, is you can also do that in a batch process sort of way. So I could come in and highlight multiple photos. Let's just grab these four photos here. And you can see I've got Brilliance AI as an option over here on this right hand side. I just click this and change it to on and it will go in and analyze those four photos. And in just a moment, you will see it will come in and populate all four of these with an updated view based on what Brilliance AI has done to the photo. And you can see these two have happened already. There you go. And there you go. So these four photos have now had Brilliance AI applied to them. So that means if you just got a whole group of photos, highlight them all, do that and boom, batch processing, Brilliance AI, really cool stuff. Now let's just take this one photo. I'm going to click D to jump over into the develop pane uh, or panel. And you saw how quick that was. This uh, product is quicker than previous releases. Uh, I want to show you real quick the layers panel. That's right up here, as you uh, probably know from previous versions. And you can now expand it, drag this down and that sort of thing. You can add text as a layer. When you do that, it says, yeah, I want to add a layer. 
and it gives you this overlay here, and I can just say Colorado. You then have the ability to manipulate the size and the font and all those kind of things. But the cool thing is, it is a text layer, as I said, so that gives you more control and more editing capability. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. I'm also gonna delete that layer, but what I wanna show you is because I added Brilliance AI already, I can show you what's happening on this layer. If you look here, there's a little arrow to the right. You click on that and it shows me there's develop and local adjustment settings. I can go in here and see what those are. So you have this expanded layers panel. And to be clear, I can drop this even further down in order to get even better visibility across all the different things I may have done to a particular layer. So better visibility, better control and text as a layer. Pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff overall. But one of the main things I want to do is show you Brilliance AI in action. Let me go get a photo and we'll walk through how that's working. By the way, they've also got Photo Raw 2024 Max, which is essentially the plugin version, which allows you to use uh, all the different features, no noise, effects, all those kind of things coming from popular host apps like Lightroom or Photos or Photoshop, things like that. So that's also a, a new thing this year. Now this is an unedited photo, just a raw file that I've done nothing to. I'm gonna go ahead and click, uh, actually before I do anything, I wanna show you, if you look at tone and color, no adjustments here. I'm gonna go ahead and click Brilliance AI and it will do the calculations and boom, it's done already. And you can see how it's gone in and adjusted tone and color to accommodate whatever it's done here with Brilliance AI. So if you look at the before and the after, I think that's pretty cool stuff. But let's say you wanna adjust that further, and this is what I really like about this. You have the ability here to adjust the amount, so I can increase the amount if I want to, uh, or decrease, so I can season to taste, for lack of a better term. I can also do that individually with just tone or color. Note that color is grayed out, it's not working in my pre-release version, but again, that'll be, uh, that'll be sorted before launch. One of the great things about Brilliance AI, of course, is that it identifies regions and creates local adjustments with masks for those particular regions. And so you can go in here and you can see it identified flora. So if I hover, you can see what it identified as flora and it identified sky, which is, it just nailed. For whatever reason, that didn't pick up mountain, but hey, this is their super select AI technology that was announced in the last version. I can just click, uh, click on mountain, click apply, and then it will add that here as another region within my local adjustments and apply Brilliance AI to it. If I wanna increase the amount of that in just the mountain, I can do that. And you can see I got a little bit more color saturation out of that from doing so. Now, as I said, these are local adjustments. And one of the other things I think is really interesting that they've done here is they've rearranged these tabs a little bit. If you remember, local adjustments used to be at the far right end and effects was second. And so I think what they're doing is effectively looking at Brilliance AI as your starting point and then perhaps tone and color and things like that and then local adjustments and then anything else including effects later on and sort of the, the editing workflow. But what I like about this is because it's created these masks, I can go in here and I can either click on local adjustment. Uh, let me just collapse that and there you go. You can see each of these three different regions that Brilliance AI identified with the local adjustment is on the local adjustment tab with a mask that corresponds to the name of this section. But the thing is, if I go back to develop, if I'm here and I wanna do something to it, you know, I can adjust this up or down as I did a moment ago, but also I've got this little arrow here. If I just click on that arrow, let's say I go to sky, if I click on that arrow, it jumps me to the local adjustment tab into the uh, adjustment that the local adjustment built for whatever I clicked on. So it took me directly to sky. So I could come over here and say, well, I like that sky, but maybe I want it a little bit brighter and maybe I want a little bit more warmth and maybe a tiny bit more temperature. I'm just kind of making this up, but you can come in and quickly jump from being on the develop tab over to the local adjustment from Brilliance AI and get in and adjust that specific adjustment without having to go through and do any other kind of work. So again, it's really all about speed and accuracy. So again, I could be in develop and maybe this time I want to go to mountain. I pop over here, I'm on Brilliance AI for the mountain in the local adjustment, and now I can go in and do whatever it is I wanna do there. Again, maybe I wanna increase that a little bit in terms of exposure, and maybe I wanna add a little bit of warmth. So that's how that works. Brilliance AI is a really cool innovation, and it's essentially using AI to identify parts of the photo and figuring out what needs to be done to the photo and doing it for you automatically, creating local adjustments with masks that you can then go and manipulate. So for me, it's really about speed and 
removing confusion from workflow. They've simplified the overall user interface to make it quicker and easier for you to get started. Then with Brilliant's AI in place, they're making it easier for you to get your edit started as well. And not just started, but finished in some cases, like I could kind of be done with this photo. And if you look at the before and the after, it was honestly just a couple of clicks and I got multiple masks made for different regions of the photo, each with their own customized amount of tone and color and adjustments here in local adjustments. And honestly, they're just taking things that I think for some people um, are kind of complex or complicated or involved. Maybe involved is a better word where it just, it can take a fair amount of work. Oh, I got to build a mask. I got to do X, Y, and Z. Brain AI is doing the masking for you, making the adjustments for you and giving you a really good starting point. And in some cases, perhaps a finishing point, you could theoretically batch process quite a few photos and get either done or pretty close to being done with that technology. So I think it's a great innovation. Now in fairness, I will say on every single photo, it's not giving me the results that I want. If I'm starting with a really dark photo, it's not making it bright enough for me. I don't know if there's gonna be adjustments to the tool. Again, I'm in a pre-release version, so everything doesn't work exactly as it's going to work. But I gotta say, for especially a, a photo that's reasonably well lit, the Brilliance AI is this close to being like a one-click edit for my photos, and I think that's pretty brilliant. And so I'm really looking forward to using On One Photo Raw 2024 with Brilliance AI. And I'll come back and I'll do more videos about this technology as well as some of the other features. There's a lot of cool stuff. It's an incredibly powerful and well-rounded product that now has got a simplified user interface and a much easier way for you to get started on your edits. Speed, usability, power, it's all there. On One, you did a great job. I'm excited about it. Hope this gives you an idea of what's coming. There's a link down below if you don't yet have a copy, and I will be back soon with more On One videos. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you guys soon, and until next time, adios.